1985, when I was a freshman in college, I remember looking into a mirror and looking into my eyes and going, where did the light go? I just looked so bored and lifeless. And that started me on a journey, a journey of how do I get that joy back? What happened to me? What happened? Why am I feeling this way? I was lost. I really could relate to that song, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I could relate to that. I was lost. And it started me on a journey looking for answers. The good news is I knew what it was like to be happy at one time. And so I knew it was possible. But at that time in my life, I was not happy. I was probably maybe depressed. Maybe um, I didn't have a label for it. Maybe burned out. I don't know what it was. There were a lot of things going on. But it started me on a journey, a journey to regain that happiness, that freedom that I had felt so often in my life. And one of the teachings I came across was uh, the late Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. I read The Power of Positive Thinking, which was a huge book back in those days. It made a big impact. And it's, it's really what made the term positive thinking popular in the United States, was the power of positive thinking. And it was positive Christianity. It was, hey, this teaching of Jesus Christ is not just about the afterlife. It's not about a doctrine. It's actually stuff you could apply in your life. Now, I had been raised Jewish. So this was a whole new thing for me. I had only studied a yoga philosophy. And um, so now this was an introduction to positive Christianity. And one of the things that I came to learn from Dr. Peel and from one of his students, Robert Schuler, is that where you put your mind will determine how you feel. Right? What you think about will determine how you feel. Now, 30 years ago, that's not something you heard a lot of. More than 30 years ago, 1985. I didn't hear much of that ever before. Don't think I ever, well, yeah, I probably did come across it at times, but not often. So I began to work with that idea to, to keep my attention on stuff that made me feel good. And it worked. It worked. It made a difference. It made a difference to have dreams, to create goals and dreams. It made a difference to affirm positive things in my mind on a regular basis. It made a difference to read positive stuff. And eventually, I went to Unity Ministerial Training back in 1991. I was one of the youngest minister, uh, unity ministers to ever go through the training. Back then, I was in my late 20s. And there was one problem. With all the positive thinking and the positive focus, I still had unpleasant emotions come up. How many of you have had that experience before? No matter how positive you get, there are still things that bring up negative emotions, right? Yes. So that was uh, yes. early 90s. I was trying to be positive, but what do I do with the negative emotions? And sometimes I felt like I was, I remember this was a long time ago, but this is how I remember it. I felt numb from the neck down. The thoughts were positive, but the heart was sort of detached. And I bet there's somebody listening to this right now who can relate to that. Why? Because a lot of intellectual people don't want to deal with their emotions. They don't want to deal with their heart. They go to their head because the heart is very sensitive and the emotions uh, may feel out of control. So they go to their head where they can control things. 
and not feel so out of control. Do I hear an amen from somebody listening to this? You know anybody that happens to? Anybody personally that happens to? So I wasn't sure how to deal with that. And quite frankly, there weren't a lot of answers at that time for that question. There was one person, uh, Reverend Jim Rosemurgy was a unity minister, and he talked about the sacred human, learning to embrace your sacred human, your humanness, your emotions, your, your human self. And he was the only voice that I knew of, or one of the few, talking in those terms. So that started me on a new journey. There was Stephen Covey, the seven habits of highly effective people, who talked about being proactive. Focus on what you can do in your life instead of the problem. Be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. And that was very powerful. You have the freedom to choose your response. Between every stimulus and every response, there's a gap, and in that gap is your freedom. I talked about that for years. However... As great as that teaching is, it didn't quite go deep enough for me and my experience. Fast forward over 30 years. The series we're doing right now, Living Untethered, Michael Singer, for me, goes to that deepest depth of how do you deal with emotions? How do you grow spiritually at the same time? Because a lot of metaphysics, in my experience, has been about your thinking. It's been about your focus. It's been about what do you want in your life? Focus on that. And that's all fine. That's good. That's a tool. That's positive. But for the person who really, really, really wants to live life to the highest degree, the person who really, really, really wants to grow spiritually and not just try to make life comfortable, this teaching is where it's at. And and there's a lot of other people, I'm sure, who are teaching something similar. But that's why I love what we're talking about right now in this series. And today, talking about the heart. The heart. What do you do with that very sensitive place at the center of your being? Because you can think, you can be in your head, But that's not going to ultimately help you grow spiritually. Not only that, ultimately you're not going to be happy if all you're dealing with is your mind. So, so far in this series, we started out teaching the most important thing anybody could ever know, and that is you are in there. How many of you know you're in there? You're in there. That's a very deep teaching. That you're in there. Some of you are like, all right, I know I'm in there. A lot of people don't know they're in there. (laughs) They don't know they're in there. We said you're in there. You in there are a spiritual being. That's what it means. Spirit's not in there somewhere, you know, like a raisin in a bun. Spirit is being you. You are spirit. You are consciousness. Jesus said, is it not written? He was quoting the Old Testament. Is it not written, ye are gods, with a little g? How many times did you grow up hearing that statement? Unless you grew up in unity, you never heard that statement. Right? And yet it's in there. Jesus said it. Ye are gods, with a little g. What does that mean? It means you are an expression of spirit. You are consciousness. You are source. And this is a very practical idea. Because when you know that, when you are aware that I'm aware, and it's not complicated, this is not esoteric, you know that you're in there. 
The problem is, as we said, there's a three-ring circus going on. And you're a part of that three-ring circus. I'm a part of that three-ring circus. You, consciousness, gets lost in the three-ring circus. The world comes in through your senses. It, it causes stirrings and overwhelming stuff in the mind, in your thoughts, in your emotions. And you forget, I'm in here. I'm consciousness. You get caught up in the drama, the melodrama, the melodrama. Everybody say melodrama, and it ain't mellow, is it? <laughs> it is drama, drama. Some people love the melodrama. Why? Because they're bored. Why? Because they're looking for distractions from their three-ring circus. And so a little melodrama gives them an adrenaline rush and it lifts them up, it gets them out of their mind, out of their stuff, and for a few moments they are free and then back to the garbage that's inside. We're talking about purification. Isn't that what the teachings of Jesus the Christ was about? It was about be being reborn, meaning awakening to your true nature, your true self, being purified of the garbage that's inside. And if somebody's offended by that, I don't have any garbage inside of me, well then, thank you for coming down from heaven to be with the rest of us, to uplift <laughs> us with your presence. We all have stuff, stuff. That's why we're here. We're here to grow. We're here to grow. Unless there's a gospel written about us somewhere that we don't know about. The four gospels of us, we're here to grow. So anyway, that's what we said in number one. You're in there, you're consciousness, you're aware that you're aware. Same as God, Moses in the wilderness. Who do I say sent me? I am that I am. I'm aware that I'm aware. You're an expression of God. You are aware that you're aware. Then last week, we talked about the mind. The mind. By the way, very popular with, on Internet. A lot of people interested in last week's message. I don't know if it's because it's called the mind or what. But I hope they're tuning into the heart because that's even more important. But we said the mind. Everybody have a mind? Nobody lost their mind? Might be a good thing to lose the mind once in a while. Yeah, my mom used to say, I've lost my mind. And I'd agree with it. You lost your mind. No. So, the mind. The mind is a field of energy in which there are thoughts. Right? A thought is an object. The world is an object. You're the subject. You're consciousness, and you have the world come in, which is an object, and you have thoughts, which are an object. You're the subject, a thought's an object. It comes into your mind. And the mind, we said, there are willful thoughts, and there are automatic thoughts. Willful thoughts is, we could say, I want you to imagine a pink elephant. How many of you imagine a pink elephant right now? All right. Imagine a boat in the ocean. Got it? Okay. That's a willful thought. You determine what you're going to think. There are also automatic thoughts. Here, this is very important, ladies and gentlemen, because we identify ourselves with our automatic thoughts. This is why this is so important. This is key. You are not your thoughts. We have automatic thoughts that pop into our consciousness all the time, and it comes in as a voice. A voice. You ever talk to yourself? Yeah. You talk to yourself, right? Anybody willing to admit they talk to themselves? All right. A couple honest people up in the house here. Good deal. That voice starts talking. 
Right? Something comes in from the outer world into your senses. Your mind interprets it. And if it strikes you in a positive way, then you might voice positive thoughts. If it strikes you in a negative way, then that voice might start talking negative thoughts. Right? What might that voice say inside your mind? Can you believe what he said to me? I can't believe what he said to me. He's not going to say that to me again. I'm going to set him straight. I can't believe this happened today. Why did this happen? What did I do, God, for this to happen? You know, whatever. The mind starts talking. How many of you know the mind talks? Please raise your hand. Yeah, the mind talks. Here's the problem. We think that's us. We think we're the, that's me. I'm just, you know, I'm talking. That's me. That's not you. You're the one in there who's aware of the voice talking. You're just identifying with that voice. That's not you. You, 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 is that sinking in? That voice is not you. You're the subject. You're the witness. You're the observer. That voice are your thoughts. That's how your thoughts function, as a voice. Very, very important. Singer says, until, so what do you do when that, when that voice starts talking? What do you do? Well, most people... Just go along with that voice. <laughs> yeah, I'm just so upset. I don't know what to do. And da 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 da. And they talk to people about it. And let me tell you what I think. And I don't know why she did that or why he said that. I don't know why this happened. The voice. And then when we're not talking to someone, we're talking to ourselves. And the mind is going and going and going. And when we are identified with that voice, we have lost. The awareness that I'm in here. That I'm the one who can observe my mind. Now we are the mind. We are the thoughts. Because we have lost that seat of self, as the Buddhists call it. The observer. We've lost it. The story of the prodigal son. Right? Prodigal son goes to his dad says, hey. How about my inheritance, Daddy? Early. Daddy gives him his inheritance. He goes off. He squanders it in the far country and ends up in a pig pen. Not a great place for a young Jewish man. Non-kosher pig pen. (laughs) And comes back to his dad. He has a realization. He has a realization. I must arise and return to my father. He realizes that he got caught up in the circumference of life. He had a moment of awakening. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not this stuff out here. It says he arose. He had a, a breakthrough. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not all these thoughts. I am consciousness. I'm the observer. You return to the Father. You return to the Source. You return to consciousness. I am. Are you with me? The mind. That's what we talked about, the mind. There's a lot more we could say about the mind, but we're going to stop there for today because we're getting into the heart. Michael Singer says, what do you do with the mind? What do you do with the mind? All you do is observe it. You witness it. You don't try to change it. You don't try to shut it down. You don't try to push it into a corner. You don't want to repress it. You don't want to fight it. All you do is stay in that awareness I am that I am, that consciousness, and you just notice what your mind's doing. That's it. He says, until you can do that, when you do that, let's put it in a positive way, when you do that, 
Now you're ready to deal with the heart. But if we're running off with the mind, we're not even ready for the heart yet. We're not even ready for the heart yet. Our mind is trying to cleanse itself. So let's go into the heart now. We're going to do more with the heart next Sunday also uh, as we explore it more. But let's, let's go into the heart now. So this, this mind that starts talking, why does it do that? It does that because of your heart. The mind starts going because your heart is disturbed. Your heart is upset. And automatically the mind starts talking. Why? Because your spirit, your consciousness, what they call Shakti in the Hindu tradition, spirit in the Christian tradition, Chi, in the Asian tradition, is trying to get rid of your inner blockages. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Not up there somewhere, but within your own being. Knowing that wonderful, beautiful self that you are, that that love, that joy, that peace that you are that wisdom that you are, that clarity that you are, that creative flow that you are, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall experience and know that. That's what's trying to happen. It's always trying to express more freely and free, freely through us. And as it's trying to do that, it brings up the blockages. So what happens? When... Something comes in from the outer world or it comes in from your own mind, a memory, something triggers a thought. It hits blockages that are in there, stuff that we've suppressed. This is no deep psycho and net. We're not going into, oh, this is too psychological for me. Guess what? It's inside of you, whether we want to believe it or not. It's inside of you. It's what Freud was all about. We have suppressed stuff from the time we were babies and we cried and nobody came into our room or whatever. We didn't know what to do with that energy. Maybe a baby didn't do it, but children, you know, as we get older and we get upset about stuff, we don't know what to do with those feelings. So what do we do? We can suppress that stuff. Or we get upset, we resist what's going on, and that suppresses it. Hear that very closely. Jesus said, resist not. Resist not. Why? When we resist something, we think we're getting rid of it. Oh, I don't like this. I don't want that. That doesn't get rid of it. It suppresses it. It suppresses it. So we've got this suppressed stuff inside of us that goes way back, way back. And here's the good news. We're, being, we're getting real this morning, aren't we? We're being real here. Uh, we're telling it like it is. I'm not telling you something so that we can skip out of here and feel, you know, oh, rainbows and unicorns. No. This is real spiritual growth. That stuff that gets hit inside of us is a positive thing because it shows us where we need to grow. That stuff that when your heart gets uncomfortable, all that is is stuff that's trying to be released inside of you. That's it. When our heart gets uncomfortable, we ought to go, hallelujah, hallelujah, I can release some stuff right now. But what does the typical person do? She made me angry. Man, am I going to change her? Or, boy, no, I don't like this situation. I'm going to change this situation. 
Doesn't that mean we're not going to take some action to do something? We might. But most people are taking action because they're uncomfortable in their heart and they think they've got to change something outside to make their heart comfortable. The heart is very sensitive, isn't it? The heart is very sensitive. It opens and it closes constantly. You can be having a conversation with somebody, and if they have a certain facial expression that strikes you in a negative way, your heart will start to close, will it not? Or if they strike you in a positive way, your heart will open. Oh, I like this person. Something about this person. I like this person. And as Singer says, it's all because we've got the stuff that's buried inside of us. We think it's because of what's going on out here. He says it's all because of stuff that's buried inside of us. And the stuff that comes in out from the outside is triggering the stuff that's inside of us. Nevertheless, the key is, how do you deal with that heart? So your heart is always opening and closing based on what's going on around us all the time. Can you, now, like I said, a lot of people aren't aware of that. A lot of people, they, they are intellectualize everything. They don't want to become aware of their heart. They want to escape into their heads. They rationalize stuff. Oh, he didn't mean to do that. Don't take it personally. So they go from their heart, which is sad or anxious or insecure, and instead of actually becoming aware of that, they go right into their head. Oh, it's done. he didn't mean it. Don't take it personally. They're going to their head. Basically, they're telling their heart, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Or, if they're negative, if they're being negative, then they go to their head, and instead of feeling what's in there, they start, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk to him about that. Yeah, he's not going to do that again. I'm going to have a conversation with him. So now, instead of actually feeling what's going on in the heart, they're in their head talking about what I'm going to do about it. Well, how I'm going to fix it. What I'm going to change about it. Can anybody relate to what we're talking about? Yeah. It is happening all the time. All the time. All the time. But the good news is you and I can become very wise and grow a whole lot by... First of all, simply, it's simple, but it's not easy. Noticing when your mind starts to talk, let that be a trigger. Oh, my, my heart, my heart is upset. There's something going on in my heart. When your mind starts to talk, practice watching it. Practice watching your mind. And, and, and try to stay in that witness state of watching your mind. Watch what it says. Watch what it does. See if you can stay in that observer witness consciousness without jumping in with your mind. Make sense? Because the mind just wants to get rid of what the discomfort is in the heart. And then, then we start to, then it's time for us, we can start to look at the heart and become aware of what's going on in the heart and how to deal with the heart. So the heart is very sensitive. And you have emotions all day long. We have emotional energy going on all day long, but we only notice it when it's extreme emotion. When there's anger, when there's real joy and we feel elated, then the heart, then we're like, oh, yeah, I'm, I feel that emotion. 
But there's emotion going on all day long. There's a stream of emotional energy all day long. It's the extremes that we tend to notice. So what we can do is begin to treat our heart with the utmost respect and recognize that when your heart gets disturbed, it's because this spirit inside of you is trying to release stuff, blockages that are inside of you. It's not because of what she said. She said something that triggered stuff that's already buried inside of you. It's not because of what happened. What happened is touching stuff that happened maybe when you were a kid or uh, years ago, and it's triggering stuff inside of you that's wanting to be released. And you and I have an opportunity to be to witness that, to facilitate the healing of that simply through our awareness. We're not talking, I mean, you can go about it in many different ways. You can get therapy, you can do body work, you can, you know, do all kinds of things to approach it. Um, the method we're talking about and employing here is awareness. Awareness as the great healer. Because your awareness is spirit. Your awareness is consciousness. Your awareness is the great healer. So that's what we're bringing to, to bear right here. And it doesn't take a great deal of willpower to be aware of what your mind's doing. Your mind's going to talk all day long. Just notice it. Watch it. Your heart's going to feel all day long. Notice it. Watch it. And next week when we talk about the human predicament and beyond, we're going to go more into what is your heart doing and how do you deal with this very sensitive aspect inside of you. How do you deal with the heart? But for now, I want you to practice observing your mind when it starts talking. Observing your mind when it starts talking and letting that be a clue. Oh, my heart's upset. Let that be a clue to bring your attention to what you might be feeling because your mind is reacting to your heart. You see, this is what, in my spiritual journey over more than 30 years, was never really explained. It was all about, let's get our thoughts in the right place. Let's focus our thoughts. But there's a lot more going on than that. It's not just where your thoughts are. You've got stuff inside of you that wants to be purified. You got stuff inside of you that wants to be healed. You got stuff inside of you that wants to be cleansed. And the Holy Spirit, the whole Spirit of God is seeking to express the Shakti, is seeking to purify you and clear up all those energy centers inside of you so that you can truly let your light shine and live in that beautiful energy of your true nature, your true self, so that you can really experience the kingdom of God that is within you. That isn't, that's not just about creating an outer world. See, that's what people do. We're going to talk more about this next week. People are trying to create an outer world to be exactly the way they want it to be so that it doesn't hit their stuff. They want the world to be exactly the way it is. I like it this way. I don't like it that way. They want the outer world to be exactly the way they want it so they can journey through their life and not have it hit their stuff. Good luck. I've never met anyone where it happened that way. I've known a lot of great spiritual teachers. I've known, I've read a lot, a lot of books, and that ain't how it works. So let's do the healing work. Let's do the work that's necessary so that we can truly experience the kingdom of God that is at hand. Let's get still together. 
And we thank you, Father, Mother, God, Jesus the Christ said, I've come with a sword. Ooh, that's kind of violent, Jesus. I've come with a sword. The sword of truth. The sword of truth that separates the wheat from the shaft. That cleanses that stuff that's inside of us. That stuff that needs healing. That stuff that wants to be released. That stuff that's blocking the joy. The peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, Spirit, for your work that you're doing through us. Thank you for your words of truth that are reaching our ears. That are reaching our hearts. Thank you for your guidance and your wisdom that is freeing us, that is cleansing us, that is healing us. As our brother and teacher and way shower said, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And so it is. Amen. Amen.